Anyone that has questions that are in attendance, you all can address the board with whatever questions you have and we'll answer them and then we'll get out of here uh, pretty quickly since it's a small crowd. So we can start at the end. I believe that's Ms. Aquila on the end. So she's our HR director. Next to her, we have Tanika Hughes. Uh, what is it, a 26 year veteran of Thornton Township? 27. Oh my God. I got you. I have 27. Next, we have, and she's uh, over the GA department, the director. Uh, we have next, Ebony, who is over Youth and Family Services. I'm Keith Price. I'm over the food pantry. We have Robert Hunt, who's the CPA and does the finances. Next to him, we have Tanika. Um, no, nope, not Tamika, Tamika and Miss Brown, who head senior services. So at this time, if anybody has certain questions that they wanted to ask either one of these directors, please feel free to do so. Go one at a time and uh, we'll address your issues. And if we have documentation present, we'll give you that documentation uh, so that we can get this thing going over and I just definitely appreciate even though it's a small smaller crowd this time I appreciate people taking the time out their day to come ask questions they may have without it being such a hostile environment so I appreciate you all and whoever has a question please feel free to go up to the podium and address the uh, members yes sir yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being here for us. My name is Charles Rayburn, and I don't know who would take this. I don't know who would like to answer this, but I just want to read this very briefly. According to Robert's Rules of Order, if a meeting is not formally adjourned, and last night the meeting was not formally adjourned, it is considered to still be in session meaning that business can continue to be conducted as if the meeting had not ended. Unfinished business from the meeting would be taken up first at the next meeting unless the bylaws specify otherwise. How can I get bylaws for the township, bylaws for the village of Dalton right here? Because I, I want to know uh, an answer to this question. Are we still in session from the meeting last night? Can business still be conducted? because the, there are several motions that I'd like to make from the floor. A motion from the floor is never out of order. So would anyone like to take that question? Well, you can look up the township code online. It'll give you all the uh, governing laws about township code. Uh, as far as the meeting, it was not properly adjourned, but because of the hostile situation, when the security guard removed the supervisor, there was no longer a quarrel. You have to have the three to have the quarrel. Once the quorum was not present, the meeting has to cease instantly. Now, as of anything being carried over, I don't think they will have to because of the situation, but we will see. Okay, I appreciate that answer, but I respectfully disagree. Once again, this is uh, language specific. What is it you disagree with? Yeah, I, it says that the meeting is not adjourned just because a quorum is no longer present. Once a quorum is present and the meeting starts, unless it's adjourned, it continues. That's what's in this state. So I respectfully disagree. Can someone kind of, uh, you know, so we don't have to discuss or argue with that. Can someone kind of make sure that this meeting is not still in session? Thank you. By way of law, if you do not no longer have a quorum, you cannot continue a meeting. Uh, anything other than that, like I said, we will check into it. Thank you. Anybody else? Do we have to get up and speak at the podium? I can no, bring you the mic. I can bring you the mic. Bring the mic to you. It's okay. I mean, because it's kind of informal, so. No, it's cool. It's okay. okay. Bring the mic to you. My name is Chris. I just came to listen. Just wanted to hear just. I guess a good question would be just to hear about all the different departments and just hear just maybe one good thing about your department, what, you know, makes you excited about being in that department and what great things you're doing in Thornton Township. 
that's kind of why I came to here. Well, um, to survive 27 years here at Thornton Township, you have to like what you do. And I think because I started in 1997, young, fresh out of college, left downtown, and I came here um, to help out in the assessors department. I worked for Arlene Fanton, who happened to be the assessor and the state rep of the 29th district. And working with her, I got the opportunity to be appointed to the school board. And then after that, I ran for the school board. So politics, and that's my degree in, second part of my degree is in politics. So I kind of understand it, but I have a desire to serve people because my degree is in actually in human services. So you have to like what you do. I told my staff yesterday that I was retiring next year on my birthday. And they was like, no, you're not, you're too, you, you're too passionate about what you do. And I am very passionate about what I do. But at the same time, it's time for us to move so other people can be as passionate about what I, this place as I am. Mm -hmm. No one understands, I can speak about every department in Thornton Township for 27 years, give you that knowledge. I didn't have to run the department, but I love hanging out in the youth department because I was downstairs getting my counseling session from being driven upstairs crazy, so I came downstairs and got counseling. Uh, working with Christmas baskets or Christmas toys, wrapping gifts, and watching the people light up when they come in and sign up uh, for that. We end up bringing other programs to Thornton Township in my department, such as CETA. All of CETA programs, by the way, starts October 1st. So just to let y'all know. Um, but I'm excited about my department helping people get back in the workforce, get back into being productive, feeling, because you know, the world is changing every day. And jobs are not like they used to. When do you know you can stay 20 some years at a job? Not today, because companies are transitioning fast and people are don't have to put up with it. I don't have to put up with this, I can go somewhere else. But because Jobs and people are changing, society is changing, the whole dynamics are changing, and especially since COVID. When we were at home, people didn't want to come back to work. I came to work every day with the only person in this building, every day during COVID. All right, Zach, you was in the building with me too. Security was in the building with me, but I was in this building every day during COVID while everybody was at home. And when they came back, I was like, why are you here? Go back home. But you have to have a joy for what you do. I don't have a problem getting up in the morning and coming to this place, or I may have a problem sometimes leaving the place at night, but I don't have a problem coming to the place because I know what I'm here for. I'm here to serve the people with a willing heart, with an open heart. And to find out you're helping somebody, that's what it's all about. Making sure somebody lights bill get paid, their gas bill get paid, they transition back to the workforce, helping them with their mortgage, everything. That's what I love about my department. And that's my PSA. <laughs> All right, I hope that helped you out. Okay, and you're in which department? I am, I'm in, I'm in general systems. Okay, yeah, that's the department I wanted to know about. Okay. Is anybody in community relations? Would you be able to talk about the food assistance department? Uh, please. Reason why I asked this question. I was going to let each person oh, answer yeah. his question, and then yeah. it was going to get to me, and I was going to do it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Good evening. Um, I'm Ebony. I'm the manager of Youth and Family Services. Um, so currently, right now, we have an after-school program. The after school program is located at our township Riverdale location um, on 143rd and Halsted. Um, the program runs from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. We also have a partnership with our transportation department where we service eight different schools and we pick the kids up from school and bring them to our Riverdale location. Um, with that, they we, we provide homework help, we do um, a project every day. They, we provide them with a snack as well. Um, so it's just a great experience and we're helping a lot of families. They love that we um, interact with the kids with their homework help, of course, but also 
not just letting them stay on their phones for the entire time, but actually have different projects for them to do. Um, each day is something different. Today they made bracelets, um, they made um, some clay the other day, and slime ugh, um, was last week. But we have a lot of different projects for them to do every day. On Fridays we have a movie day where we get popcorn and they have their snack and then they can sit down and they can, you know, eat the popcorn and watch their movies. Um, so the kids really enjoy coming to the after school program. The parents enjoy that the program is until 7 p.m., I'm sure. Um, but even on days where some of the kids, they may get out of school early, they get out at noon, kid, the parents are still bringing them back at 3 because they still, the kids want to come to the program. They, um, it's a family, right? So they come in every day. How was school? How was homework? They hugging. Hey, Miss Ebony. Hey, it's school. Tell me about the day. So just interacting with the kids is a great experience, um, and just helping the families as well. And we also, for youth and family, we do employ the youth, right? So we have some high schoolers that are working part time um, over there as assistants. So they worked throughout the summer and they continue on for the fall program. So it's also it's just an overall it's a great experience to be able to work with the employees there as well as the parents and the kids. Okay, thank you. Ms. Aquila, you have anything? Or, no? Dang, I turned it off. Hi, my name is Aquila and I am um, over the Human Resources Department, which is a very important department because that's how we get our employers. And so we did a mass hiring this summer for our lawn care called HAP program. And so that is a youth program that we hire you um, to help cut the lawns for the citizens of the township. And so that program runs from May to October, end of October. And so we're almost at the end of that program we also hired the youth for our uh, youth and family services program. And so that was pretty much a mass hire. And I think we had about 20 kids, I believe. Yeah. Yep, and they summer. did the uh, days in the park for the summer. So that's always uh, interesting and fun because the kids get a chance to make money while they're still having fun. Uh, we also did a partnership, um, I believe for the first time this year, with a non for profit organization where we had uh, youth to come in and to assist here in the township. And they were actually some really good workers. And so we were pleased about that. We also had two unpaid interns who wanted to volunteer for our um, media and our uh, IT department. And they were college students who just needed college credit and experience. So I was happy to be able to roll that out. Uh, on the flip side of that, you know, always trying to bring in talented and well-equipped employees who will benefit or who we will benefit from employing. And so we always look forward to candidates who are um, up to part, where they can bring valuable work experience and knowledge. The flip side of that is my uh, other background is professional development and training. And so I am in the process of rolling out training for our current employees. You can never know too much. Uh, we learn daily. And so that is a passion of mine is being able, able to train and to develop, whether I do it myself or we bring in someone to train our employees so we can be successful in what we offer to the constituents, to the residents, to the people who come to the township. And we have a lot of valuable sources and resources. And so I always say, if you don't have a human side, you're not part of human resources. You have to believe in the people and have a passion for the people. And so there you have it. KV, before you get started, can I, I just want to kind of speak to some of the things that uh, Ms. Quill said, as well as uh, Ms. Hughes said. Uh, my name is William. I'm the Executive Assistant to Supervisor Henry. 
And I just want to say um, with GA, uh, with the foresight of the supervisor, 20% um, I think I've heard you speaking with the gentleman back here at the kind of ear hustling, that you said that some of these programs, if I'm correct, you said you didn't know about. Well, when she came in, um, we found out with our, our research that 20% of the township um, knew about the resources that were here. And um, Ms. Hughes can speak to the, the, the uptick once she uh, formulated a outreach team of 10 youth within our township, because she believes in working and keeping the money within our township. She hired the youth from October to February. They went to all of the residence halls, knocked on the doors, let them know about the resources that was offered here free from the taxpayer money that they give. We're giving back to them those resources and from that, and um, Mr. KP can also speak to the uptake once she went to all those doors and the people said, wow, we didn't know that these resources existed. And so in doing so, we got a great influx of our citizens coming in and um, benefiting from those particular resources. And as far as um, uh, Ms. Aquilas, she was speaking about HAP. HAP is a, a program that was here and with the, the, the foresight of the she said, this will be for our veterans and this will be for our seniors. So it's not for all of our citizens. It's for the seniors who don't have an able body in the home that can actually go out there and get their grass cut. Because as you well know, if you own a home, you want it to be the best it can be. You can be the cornerstone of that community. And so with that, she has with our contractors as well as with our youth, ability for our youth to learn from a contractor as well as the citizens to get their grass cut professionally. And so that gives the young, our young people an opportunity to learn a skill, because everyone is not college material, okay? So I just wanted to kind of point that out that, you know, to, to your point, that we have these things available there for our citizens, and this is a way we can give back to our community. And these are some of the things that, and, and, I, and I really appreciate um, you know, the citizens coming out, you know, we would love to see more citizens come out like we have a big bingo and coming out for these uh, these meetings with the media to kind of have this conversation so you can understand that we are here to serve. And that's the heart and we can all attest that that's the heart of our of our leader, of our supervisor. She wants to serve. She's accessible to the community. And so those are some of the things I just wanted to point out that they are yet and still some of the foresight of our uh, of our supervisor for those programs. Yes, another important thing. Don't 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 leave it out. What they're passing out right now is the media part of this. See, they put Tiffany puts it in writing, yes. so the people that didn't know they see the programs you're just talking about. They see it right here and the number and the people to contact. So yes. that when the youth go out, they have that also and they leave that with them. They do absolutely. But, but they, why would they complain about this little budget? To inform us about yes. why you're here. So yeah, well, one of the things I was talking to a young lady right here, when you see, when you see someone's name on something, like I know that you're wearing a Disney hat because you got Disney, or you're from Morehouse, or you got on a, a, a Nike shirt, it's called branding. And not only is it just saying branding, it says who's accountable, who's responsible for this. So the name's on there to show accountability and transparency. So it's not just putting someone's name. This is the person that we can say is responsible for all of these resources. And that's the part that they leave out. They say, well, you know, let's not throw the bat the video of the bathwater here. These are people that need these services. And we're trying to put these and we are putting these into the hands of these people because the supervisor with that particular research found out it was a greater need in our township that needed them. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, again, I'm Keith Price. I'm the manager of the food department. I've been at the pantry for two and a half years now. Uh, when you say what drives you to do it, I speak to seniors constantly that don't have food, that haven't eaten in days. Uh, we make it a priority to get them in the system. Uh, we make sure they're taken care of if they don't have water. Uh, there was a lady yesterday, I got a call from an alderman in Harvey and this lady hadn't eaten in days. So I asked, please send me all her information. We contacted her. Uh, she verified that she hadn't eaten in days. I can't remember her age, but she was in her 80s. Um, so what we did was got, made sure she was a resident of Thornton Township 
And in those cases, even if you're not a resident, we have the right to give out emergency boxes. But we made sure that she was in the township. We gave her a card. Uh, we put her in the system, but we took her a nice amount of food over there for that day. And, and, and that alderman, well, I should say he's a retired alderman, Alderman Whittington from Harvey, uh, called me that day and said that the lady was very appreciative. And when you can help people, uh, when, when any job puts you in a position where you can help people, uh, especially those that's in dire need, it's, it does something to your spirit to be able to help. I've had seniors calling, crying. I've had younger people that's homeless. Uh, so we take care of a lot of people at the pantry. Um, and if to just give you a little brief, brief on the pantry, any senior within the township that's 60 or older can sign up to have a food box delivered once every 30 days. That's the Chicago Food Depository rules with that. Um, we do deliveries to senior homes and senior residences on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, if a senior is a more active senior and gets around, they can come through the line on Wednesday, which is our distribution day. Uh, since, since arriving at Thorn Township Food Pantry, the numbers have almost tripled what we do on Wednesdays. Uh, today, a little disappointed, I like to hit 400 families on, on a Wednesday, but today we ended with 380, yeah, five or six it was the final number. Here it is right here. 387 was the final number, but the number of people that we actually fed, so when it says households served today, 387, that's individual people. Um, Within those households, everybody has a different amount of uh, people that live in their home. So the individual served today was 711. Wow. Out of those 387 homes that were served, the total of uh, individuals that would benefit from those boxes today is 711. And when you can do things like that, man, it just really, it's just a great position to be in. Uh, we speak about the flyer that was just passed out to everyone. Uh, you hear about the outreach program. These are the type of flyers that they were taking, but when they were originally going out, there were multiple flyers mm -hmm. to describe each event. So what we did was kind of condensed it where that one piece can be printed over and over again. and. Uh, these are the type of materials that they take to individual doors. They do not take campaign literature. No. They do not ask people who are they voting for. No. They go to the door strictly to address people and inform them of the services that the township can provide for them. And if they need them, they have all the numbers on one piece of paper. Uh, it's, it's, it's what bothers me the most <laughs> is when you, and, and most people can go online if they take the time to just look for the audits. You have audited numbers online. You can go back. I personally only went back to 2017. Uh, and the township was running a deficit from 2017. Uh, these are the things that they won't talk about. And currently, right now, when the supervisor swore in, when Ms. T Tiffany Henry swore in, it was a 4.5 or 4.6 deficit with that year, fiscal year, basically coming to an end. Million. Yeah, 4.6 million. I didn't say 4.6, you know, but yes, sir, million. $4.6 million deficit when she took this office, this seat. And now, we're at a 9.8, are we 9.8, approximately 9.8 surplus for the year? Well, um, it's just a yes or no, it's a 9.8, 9.6, whatever it is. Uh, <laughs> hold it down. Hello? Um, so, um, yeah, that's that. So between the period of March 1st of this year, 
August, we are up nine, $9 million. That does not include anything from the past. So when we take in all the revenue we received from March 1st to right now, that, uh, our fiscal year starts March 1st. Right. So um, between March and August, we're up um, $9 million. So we brought in, um, when we take into consideration all the tax dollars and everything that we spent so far, we have a uh, surplus of $9 million from this from the past six months. Um, that includes only just the last six months That's of activity. That's just the last six months. Um, when we look at last year, last fiscal year, we, um, we also had a, um, a positive for the, over the last 12 months. But I um, hope, hope that answers your question. Yeah, that's, yes. yeah that's, that's fine. I know it was nine point something, but, yeah, but that's, yeah. for this current fiscal year yeah, as yeah, of today. Sure. Yeah. And, and give me a second. And what was very irritating is these are factual numbers that can be proved, yet the news will not touch on these issues. Uh, like I said, you could go online, you can pull audited numbers. These aren't made up numbers. They'll be right there for you to see. Uh, but that's one of the things that keep me in this fight that I ended up in. Um, you know, one of the easiest things to do in life is quit. One of the easiest things to do is to be able to walk away from something because Soon as you stand up for somebody, they have a whole group of people that will attack you and start talking about you and put your children online and put your house picture online. It's easy to walk away and a lot of people can't handle or aren't made to handle that type of pressure. Right. Uh, all I ever ask anyone to do is seek the truth. Don't believe me, don't believe them, don't believe the supervisor. Get facts for yourself and you'll see what I've learned and that's what's, that's what's keeping me in this fight. It could be so easy to walk away, like, oh, this ain't, this ain't worth it. You know, they're talking about this, they're talking about that. But until somebody can give me something more than allegations and probably could be illegal type quotes on, on the news, I'm gonna continue to fight. And like I said, I enjoy what I do. I see how many people we help. I see how, 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 how the seniors enjoy themselves when they come here for big bingo. Uh, it's, it's, it's more than just bingo for them. It's socialization. It gets them out. They come, they have a good meal. Some of these seniors have told us that if it wasn't for that meal, they didn't know what they were going to eat that night. These are things we hear. So when you hear and you're a part of the other side, but you notice that the media never covers anything positive, it just makes me want to fight. And, and, and I would lie to you if I say it was, it's, it's not very trying and irritating and, you know, people want to get up in your face, call your names, and you got to try to hold as much professionalism as you can and, you know, uh, it's, it's trying, but I have always stood for what I believe in. I fight for what I believe in. And I don't believe in hear, hearsay or he say, she say. And I've never seen so many people act so ignorant, ignorant careless. You can see that their hearts are hardened. Uh, and, and no matter how much truth you give them, they don't care. But go ahead, you had a question. Well, I think one of the things is kind of like a mob mentality at this point, at least what I stomach gathered. But at least, well, two parts. Um, the first part is one of the things I keep hearing is about the seniors and what you guys do do for them. Like, you know what, I'm kind of a soft guy. Like the fact that I hear things like, person will be in a home, they won't even have a family, but you guys will go out there and get them and do things for them. Instead of them just waiting to end at the, at the end, they actually have people to care about. Yeah. So I, I think that's a beautiful thing. And I'm like, well, why do we want to stop that? Exactly. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Moore goes out to the senior homes and does bingo yeah. and feed these, these seniors. Our, 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 
<laughs> are seasoned adults, you know, and for anybody to want to stop things like that, you, you have to start taking a deeper look into what could possibly be the motives. Uh, they said something about, oh, these things could possibly be illegal. They're not. We have emails from the law firm stating that as long as that the township doesn't charge for bingo boards, it does not violate any of the gaming laws. And, and we also have emails that stated that the township can purchase gifts. Uh, so all of the, man, the political footballs that they just kick around, every time you bring them one thing, they, they, they shift it to something else. So we got to, I mean, I just want everybody to pay attention and, and get the actual information for self. The only other, the other thing I was going to ask is about the surplus. This is, I'm not trying to be funny, but is it possible that the taxpayers can get some of that $9 million back? Hey, that's, that's a great question. Uh, it was too, I'm a mixed, I'm a mixed person. I got I, black, Italian, and German. Okay, so so I talk color. Okay, it was two white women sitting on the front row yesterday while the supervisor was t talking. And uh, these women said, while she was talking, why don't you stop doing bingo and give us some refunds? And I looked over there at them, I said, the board voted no to the refunds. Hold on, hold on. The numbers that Mr. Hunt has read off the last two meetings. Two of those numbers, one was for 8,000 and something, one was for 9,000 and something. Those invoices were for the programs to give refunds back to the residents. The board voted no. These are things that people can pull up, they can find, they can see it. All you gotta do is watch the videos, it's there. Uh, so, she planned on doing a nice refund because the township is up 10 million, well, I'm not gonna say 10, 9.86, whatever it is, nine plus million just this fiscal year, not to count the extra million and a half from last year. But I think it's sad that- Oh, it's about six million last year. It was a total of six? Yeah. Oh, okay, so all together it sounded more like it's 15 up over the last two fiscal years. But it's sad because I've been in this, I've been living in Thornton Township, I'm 52, 40, 42 years. I never knew of them having a deficit. It never was stated that they had a deficit. They made it seem like everything was perfect. Everything was great. But you can actually pull the audited numbers up and they'll be there. But these are the things that just make you say, hmm, you can never expect a 40-year-old a black woman to act like a 70-year-old black man. It's not going to have, the, they're not going to have the same thought process. They're not going to have the same motivation or drive. Uh, I personally think it's a political attack, and they don't want to address and put out the facts because it's a simple meeting that they could do and the facts about the numbers would speak volumes. Not only the numbers in the surplus, but the numbers of people being serviced now in the township uh, is, is outstanding. And, and they can put a lot of stuff to bed by simply coming and meeting with Robert or Robert and the supervisor or the news know how to get all the numbers. They choose not to. Right. Uh, it's a narrative that they want to push. They're pushing that narrative, and it's up to the people to decide how they feel this township is being ran. Uh, no one, no one, I don't think no one up here, no one out there, uh, the supervisor, no one likes the climate of the meetings. No one likes it. No one wants to come here and I gotta worry about somebody getting all in my face and I have to keep my cool, you know, because if I lose it, 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 believe me, if I lose it, I don't care about embarrassing me, but I don't want the supervisor. Yeah, that's all they're gonna say. Keith Price, 
Supervisor Tiffany Henyard brought him in here and he did this. And, and it's very trying not to do it or to lose it. Uh, so uh, unless you got any other questions, I'd love to entertain your questions. That's, that's what this is for. Yeah. And what you just told me, I mean, that's the things that I, like, I was expecting to kind of hear this type of thing, um, which I really do appreciate you guys kind of taking the time and just explaining and putting it out there. Um, but hopefully, you know, next time if you guys give us like handouts and things like that, or just have it kind of already, I guess, presented like the thing with the refund. I, I didn't know you guys were going to do that. That, that would have been great. They talked about it last night. You can watch yesterday's meeting. And you will hear Robert read those numbers off, and you will hear Robert address that these uh, items that they don't want to pay was for the refund. Is it is it a program? Yep. Um, yep. So, and, and he can touch more on that too because he's oh, the yeah. number guy. Yeah, I guess to kind of just explain because I, I think I heard something about that, but it's like, well, like to give an example, like let's say if you stay in like a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, you pay three thousand dollars in taxes. What type of refund could you look at? Well, like an example like that. I heard that there was a whole plan laid out. I haven't personally read it. Okay. Uh, so I don't want to make up nothing. I don't want to misquote anything. But I do believe it was going to be a nice refund that a lot of people would have been very happy uh, to receive. But when you have people that's playing politics, they're going to try to make everything about politics. They don't want the refund to go out. Why? Because some people might, you might just say they house. Because you gave them that tax refund. You might get $2,000 back and that gave me the money to stop my car from being repossessed and I could get to work. And, and people may just say, hey, I don't care what they say. Uh, she helped me out. I'm going to vote for her. You got all these seniors that they're willing to stop all these programs that's been going on. It's not like this just started because election time is here. These programs have been going on since she hit the door running. Uh, and I think it's sad that the board would use the residents and play this type of political game uh, and, and cause a large amount of seniors to be casualties of their war. Um, so it, it kind of looks like just to me that, you know, like you're saying, it's a political game. So in order to hurt her, they're inadvertently hurting them. That's what it somewhat looks like to me. I just but hope a lot of people can at, see it. But at a point, it's like, you got to be adults. And we have to look at people and, you know, help people. It sounds like that's what this whole thing's about, is helping people. Yes, sir. So it's like, and I, I'll just say for me, hopefully I'm not on the internet or anything. <laughs> But <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't honestly. I what she's able to do, I couldn't do myself. So I couldn't say she shouldn't do it. So I'm like looking at myself. If we replace her, then who else are we gonna be able to put in that position that can do what she's doing? Uh, maybe I think she could maybe take a little suggestions maybe once in a while with certain things but as far as what I'm seeing how she's affecting people it looks good it looks good and um I hope that um the, the what she's trying to do doesn't get taken away you know and all the noise like what hopefully her spirit and what she's doing is a righteous spirit in what she's doing uh, and, and and I truly believe it is uh you can't keep faking this type of service. Uh, you, when you move around with Supervisor Henyard in the public and you see the cars that pull over and the women that get out with their daughters and the daughters that want to take pictures with her and the ladies that run up and give her a hug and encourage her. And as much heat as she takes, I know she checks on me a lot. I'm sure she asks all the other department heads, how, how's their mental? And you know, and, and I'll be looking at her like, how's my mental, how you holding up? You know, so uh, you can't fake caring. You can't fake caring. Um, most elected officials, 
you won't even see them around unless it's right before election. Not all the time, not out there in the trenches, not uh, dancing with the children, not throwing the type of community events. These are not parties. They're community events that bring the community together and give people different opportunities that, that, that haven't been presented in our communities. Uh, sometimes change is, 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 is hard, uh, especially when the change is such a drastic change. But like I said, I just encourage everybody to get the knowledge, uh, research the knowledge, don't believe me. I, I've put links up for people. And they'll say, oh, them links fake. That's a damn state link. These are audited numbers, you know. So, uh, you know, un unfortunately, this is the fight we're in. And I, I believe in the end we'll be victorious. I think, but like seeing you wonderful people here, I think... It kind of seems like to me, and I, this might sound bad, that you, you guys are very lovely people, and it sounds like she's doing everything, but obviously she's not. You guys are all behind her doing these things. And I think, like with the different flyers and things like that, it may be like one of you guys' faces were on it, or something like that, or just a small picture of it. So we would kind of know, you know, there's more people in the behind the scenes. You know, this gentleman right here, he's a beautiful man. I watch him all the time and I'm like, whenever I would hear somebody say something negative about you, I'd be like, no. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great thing, I, I love your spirit. So that's one of the reasons why I was, I was glad I was even able to come out and see you. I appreciate that. But all you people that are out here, I see you guys doing a wonderful thing. And you know, if you guys are presented as well, like you guys were a whole family, just one picture saying, Hey, we're all doing this together. Well, we, that might help out a little bit. In the monthly newsletters, we recognize certain department heads, certain employees. Uh, so there are some things that go out. If you think of any elected official that you know and they're having a barbecue or a golf outing or something like that, whatever that politi whoever that politician is, their picture will be on the flyer. This is nothing new. It's just that Tiffany promoted so much harder than uh, most people have seen that it seems excessive. But most people put their pictures on flyers if they have uh, barbecues, if they have stepper sets, if they have steak fries, uh, anything. So th this is nothing new in, in the world of politics. You just never seen somebody throw so much that you see their face so much. But I love to talk to you anytime. You can take my number, and I want to get it to go on down the line. We only got three more people, and yep. we'll address any questions that anyone else has as well. Rob, you want to answer the initial question? I know. Um, do you remember the question? Can you please, please? Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pass out the time. <laughs> <laughs> what are you passing out? We didn't get it right. Yeah. <laughs> I, <guess it's> <laughs> I ain't give it to you. We shouldn't have asked you that question. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy and I, we go to the senior homes because um, all of the seniors cannot get out to Big Bingo. So with her, her foresight, she says, let's go into their, their homes. So we go to all 17 municipalities and ask the senior homes and we can come in there with the residents. Everything you see here as far as the bingo, feeding them, giving them gifts, we do that. And we talk to these these seniors, and there's no knock against their loved ones or their friends, but this is what the seniors tell us. If you guys would not come in to see us, no one would visit us. When we told them that 
you know, all those programs that you see there, events that you see there, are going to be canceled. We had a senior, she's 90 years old, she said, what are we going to do? Who's going to come see us? And so all of the programs do exist because there's a great need. And in, in, in the, the course of this political cat fight, I think what we're losing sight of it, there are real citizens that need real help. And I think we're looking at her methods and not her motives. Her motive is to help the people. Now, if we all say we're going to all go downtown, get there the best way you can, you might take a helicopter or send her, you might get over, you might drive. But what's the goal? The goal is to get downtown. The goal is to service our citizens. And they're looking at why and how. And I wouldn't want my name on, or my face on those posters because she is responsible. She is accountable. We're just a driving force behind that. She's saying, I am the leader here. And we support that. So I don't think any of our faith even deserved to be here because she, she was appointed. And all the elected officials, as you so eloquently said, are there. And it's just saying, who's responsible? Who's accountable for this, this township to be in a condition that says, that's the person's face that needs to be on there? Because she earned it. She deserves it. Because she's here because the people said, of course, Chris Gonzalez appointed her, but we go to the doors, we go to the streets, and people love her. You know why? Because she's accessible and she's genuine. And you can meet people for one moment and you can look them in the face and tell them, that person's lying to me. Ah, oh, that person's not genuine. If you've got one moment to talk to this young lady, you can tell this young lady's authentic. She's a beautiful woman. Yeah, and she's beautiful. She's beautiful. Very, I mean, if you wanted to put somebody on a post, I'd put her on a post. Yeah, and, and, but for her goal, you know, my, my, my point to this is that it's a great need and that her motives are to help people. I'll say this and I'll get this to uh, Robert. Yeah, we were Rob, out. Rob from the, Rob from the yeah. coast No, Rob's good, he'll be fine. <laughs> we, were, we, were at, we were out and we went and visited a, a, a citizen in Dalton that she hadn't seen in a while, and a gentleman, and this is a real story, this young man can attest to it. The gentleman was a senior and he was home and no one had seen him. She said, let's just stop by, we're in the area, let's stop by his house, stop by his house. He didn't have food. He said, there's nobody. I just got to the hospital. Nobody's come by to feed me. They're going to come by later. She said, no. She sent someone that moment to go get him food out of her pocket. Yep. Am I, is that a true story? That's what type of person she is. That's the kind of person she is. Families that didn't have, they, they, their kids didn't have coats. She said, William, go get their sizes. Go find out where they live. And you and Kathy go shopping, and we're going to deliver them coats. And it was cold as the Dickens. And she got, she didn't sell us, she got in the truck with us and she went there with us and delivered coats and they would never show that. That's, that's the kind of supervisor that we have. Her picture deserves to be on there because she's the person for this township because she's here to serve the residents. Robert. Oh, Robert Starr. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is um, Robert, I work in the uh, finance department. Uh, I just gave you a little documentation right here. We, um, we actually updated the information for a 2024 tax bill, uh, recent tax bill people have received in the mail. Uh, on this first page is basically a synopsis of uh, how much of your tax bill during tax town should receive. On the, next, on the next page, the simple tax bill for a house worth 230000 in South Holland. This household had a homeowner's exemption and a tax bill for the year was $9,189.47. Of the $9,189.47, a total of $486.88 was paid to Thorn Township. $486.88 of $9,189.47 is 5% of the tax bill that goes to Thorn Township to support township Another way to say this is that for every one dollar spent on a person tax bill, five cents go to Thorne Township. Imagine you own a house in South Island and it's worth $230,000. You get a tax break on your tax because you're the homeowner, which is great. Now your total tax bill for a year comes to $9,189.47. That's what you owe for owning a house. Now part of that bill goes to Thorne Township specifically $486.88. So out of your total bill, Doran Township gets $486.88 to help run things in the township. 
to put in simple terms, for every one dollar you pay in taxes, about five cents of it goes to Thorn Township. If you pay one hundred dollars in taxes, five dollars will go to Thorn Township to support their local government. <coughs> On the back is the uh, sample tax bill we use. Um, we um, highlighted different items. Um, you see um, things that highlight the general assistance, Thornton, Town of Thornton, then the Road and Bridges Thornton. If you add up those three items, that's the $486. Um, you'll see that the total tax bill at the circuit at the bottom is $9,189.47. Um, the home value is also highlighted $230,000. I, I didn't bring the other sheet. Um, we got to update, probably have an update for next month. A lot, a lot of times too, I like to highlight with that four hundred eighty-six dollars. Um, we would, um, we can give you an update number, the number of people that we serve throughout Thornton Township with food boxes, the amount of seniors that we serve during during that time period. Um, I wasn't able to update those numbers. But we have those numbers again, give you that. But I think even telling you. In more detail, and the different departments heads are here too, but to tell you how many seniors received uh, hot lunches for the year so far um, in different other different activity numbers. Um, I think that's that's all I have for today. Any questions? Yeah, I guess I would have a question in regards to the tax bill and refund. Um, when I came to one of the things that was a question of mine, so I appreciate you passing this out. My question was about, was there any plans to help the residents of Thornton Township? Not only did I come to this meeting, I also attended the meeting with the mayor since I stay in South Hall. I went there and asked him. That's been my question to just about every person in charge of South Holland as well as Thornton Township. What are the plans to help the residents? So I never got an answer to that question until last night. So I do appreciate hearing that, um, you know, and I'm sure that it will go forth because um, I'm speaking positive and I know my father, okay? And secondly, um, Robert, I appreciate you passing this out and all of the information that you have shared with us. Uh, and since we want to kind of talk about people who are not here and some of the behaviors of people, I think one of the problems is that uh, we get mixed up and crossed over. People who have issues in Dalton with Henry, they bring it to the Thornton Township. And so we have to understand that these are two separate entities. And I think that's where some of the confusion come in that, that we do not realize that this is two separate entities. And so, um, you know, it's kind of disgusting. And last night was really, really outrageous on everybody's part that was involved in it. It was outrageous. We have to learn to have integrity. We are brothers and sisters. The first thing we hear is love, but last night was not love amongst a lot of people. It was horrible. And I was very, very disappointed in many behaviors, okay, of the way some of the people were acting. Um, I did have another question. Uh, it was in regards to the grass cutting, so I'm hearing that it's seniors. And so is that again starting at age 60? And is it free? That's the first question that I have. And then I know often we are hearing about bingo. And so I just wanted to get an understanding of, uh, due to the senior, I guess, department, and what is it all that you do? Because we're hearing about some lunches now. But basically all I've heard about is bingo. And it was kind of, uh, you know, concerning, I guess, last night when Robert was reading the items that we were not going to pay, and all we kept hearing was bingo cake, bingo cake, bingo cake. There was a large number of that. So I just kind of wanted to understand what is happening at bingo. Is there a budget 
support, um, I guess we could say the ones, I don't know if the games are monthly or how they run, um, but I kind of wanted to know, do we have like a set budget or is it just fit? You know, like this week we might spend 2000 on the bingo game and then the next week 3000 So I you know, wanted to know if there was a budget. Do I want to stop bingo? No. I had a grandmother, and my grandmother, she lived in Michigan. She was alone, except for when we came to visit. Okay, she told me what she enjoyed most of all uh, was going to her senior lunch. She lived in the senior building, both of her spouses had passed. And so daily, she enjoyed dressing up and going over to the senior lunch. Uh, she said she could socialize with others. So no, I don't want to ever see that stop. You know, and I think in meeting some of the other people who come to the meeting, and I'm not talking about the rebel rousers, but I'm talking about some of the other residents. And I think because word is out that the gifts are, um, I guess I would say, I heard they stole the refrigerator. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm saying this is a rumor that you heard. You know, so we need to have clarity on actually what's going on. And I think when we speak, it's how you say something. It's not necessarily what you say, which we all have heard. It's how you say something and how we present ourselves. So basically, that's kind of like some information I wanted to know. Exactly how does the bingo, and then like I said, I'm hearing something about hot lunches for the seniors and different things. So that would really be, you know, what I wanted to hear about as well as oh. well as oh, uh, um, the age, for, or I mean the amount for the grass cutting. Is it and what's the age? Um, for the, um, uh, you got to see what, um, uh, well, I guess I could talk about first um, bingo um, right now. Um, to actually, we use we always try to present a budget. The, the board the board is still working on approving the budget for this year, so we pretty much working on last year's budget. We just rolled it over um, until something's passed. Um, yes, um, the activities, all activities are budgeted and are approved. Uh, last year in the general fund, we had a surplus of uh, one million, mm -hmm. so uh, we we met all the goals of our budget last year. Um, we in a, we're on track to have a higher surplus this year than, than last year. Uh, the general system fund also was in there within their budget. They had a surplus of, of five million um, and met all their budget goals. So that, to answer your question, uh, everything that's all the activities here at the Orient Time Shift are budgeted. We we run on a budget. We we use um, account codes and they're assigned to different accounts and each account has a budgeted amount so we by law we have to have a budget so yeah everything is budgeted um, in the past we really worked very closely with um, department heads to say hey this is this is what your department has um, stay within these guidelines um, we're, we're now they're trying to move to seem like a more uh, micro, more, more, really detailed. But in, in the past, we said, "Hey, this is, this is what you have in your line item. Stay within this." And if, and so we um, definitely have been staying within, within the budget. Um, also, all the financial reporting is available online on our township website. Um, last three year audits, the last four years of the um, budgets, um, even recaps what we did. Uh, comparatives from 2017 and 2014. Um, it's a lot of sheets over, probably over a thousand pages online of all our financial information, financial documents. Um, we, we always get our financial audits. Uh, what else I want to say? All the tax. Yes. Um, so that's the next part, the tax refund. I gave you another document. Um, when we, the last time we did our tax refund was about, I want to say, three to four years ago. Uh, we spent nine hundred thousand um, dollars, and I, all I did was just attach the audited financial reports. A lot of times, people say I'm lying, so I just sort of attached like where did I get the number from. So, but also, this is available online. And it's just excerpts from my audit reports that tell you. And then I just highlighted, put an X next to the tax refund project. Um, the goal was to do a tax refund project. Um, we do have to every every time we do, we have to have a special 
special software developed. We actually have a website that's built out where residents. <coughs> have you ever done a tax refund? Have you been out here for? I don't know it. I've been out here for over 20 years. 20 years? I've got one tax refund. Oh, okay. So for the people that don't know how it works, the tax refund program, either we have people, um, now a lot of people do it online. So we have a website platform put together where you upload your driver's license, uh, approve your utility bill and, and your tax bill. And if we will match up that information with Cook County just to verify you, you actually paid your taxes and everything matched. And then we actually just, we, we mail you a check. And so we have like a big picture of music. Before we have a picture of like all these checks, you know, take the pictures and mail them all out to the residents. It, it was a, um, a, a good time. Um, but um, that, that's, that's the program. So you have to, for us to be able to do the tax refund, we do need to have that software in place. That's not a program we can just buy from Best Buy or from Amazon and say, you, you got it. Um, I want to say the program is between, um, 20, 20, between twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars, but it would be for the whole Thorn Thorn Township. Um, and you said the board doesn't want to do it. I didn't say they did not want to do it. Um, I, I want to look at the tape, the, the exact quotes they they said. Some they there there was some quotable comments from the trustee board trustees on how they felt about the program. I know they did pull that bill out, and so now the programmers. They don't want to, if without paying them, they're not going to keep working. But they were, they was close to basically being done with the, the program. But when you, hey, if you don't pay people, they're not, they're not going to work. That, that, that's pretty much, yeah. But once they, um. So Robert's just a real nice guy, right? He is a nice guy, isn't he? And uh, <laughs> the fact of the matter is they pulled the program deals out. So. If you can't pay him, uh, like he said, he's not going to say they don't want to do the tax rebate, but obviously you don't if you're not going to pay the people uh, for the program that would allow us to give the tax rebate. So it's all about how you want to look at it. And they didn't give a reason yeah. as to why. Didn't no, do. We know the reason why. It's an election year and they don't want anything that would make Tiffany Henyer look better for re-election. That's the, it's the bottom line, so I'm going to say it, I and I hope I'm on the internet and everybody hears okay. it, you know, that's terrible. My question was going to be, when is there a time, because obviously it's not during the meeting, that we can ask those questions of them and get that answer as residents? Yes. And, you know, what is the responsibility, maybe a lot of people, and then not here, but what is the responsibility of the or the Thornton Township. What are the responsibilities? Because a lot of people may not understand, you know, what it is that you're supposed to be doing right. as a political issue. And so, so when can we ask that question? You could, you could ask questions anytime during public participation. The question is, will okay. they answer? No. Okay. No. You know, but you have the right to question them during doing that comment. public comment. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And yes, expect and expect an answer, but we may not get it. But I should expect it. Can I say this, sir? See that gentleman back there? How many times have you seen me come up here and is trustee so and so available? Is this trustee? He's nodding his head. So yes, I come up here to ask for the people that are voting against that. Okay, they are never available. They will never return my calls, okay? okay? And it's a simple question, just like what she's saying. Something I feel is fair that I, I deserve to know. So that's to answer your question. You can do it anytime, not even at the meeting. You can come okay. up here anytime they're open and say, I want to, what's the number for trustee so and so okay. that voted against this? I want to call him and ask him, will he return my call? They never return my call. Okay. okay. They may return yours, right. but uh, they're not going to return mine. Senior services. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. If you had another bingo question about the about the cakes, um, those cakes were not actually, specifically about the cakes. I, you answered the question about the budget. budget. I just want to know how does the program run? And I was just saying, by, by me kind of being a person that want to eat healthy, I heard a lot of cake, and yeah. so and I know people kind of giggle, and I don't think it's funny. You know, I'm just trying to get an understanding of exactly what it is. 
that was going on. Just like I didn't know this gentleman say, okay, they go to the nursing home. Yeah, yeah, yeah those cases from the okay. nursing home. Because see, when I had my mom in there, nobody was there and I did visit my mama every day. And nobody, even the people that worked there, they sat there and let her choke, okay? Mm -hmm. And so I had to go and bathe my mom every day and take care. So I didn't put her there and leave her there. Right. You know, I took care of my mom. And so, and I know people do put their loved ones there and just leave them. But I was just trying to get an understanding. That's something we didn't know, you know what I'm saying. And so, and when you hear these rumors, all I hear is big bingo, big bingo. And I just heard cakes, cakes. And again, like I said, I'm hearing prizes or like, and seriously, like stoves and dryers and mm -hmm. things like that. That's why I was asking, was it a budget? Mm -hmm. So that I can have an understanding. I don't want to hear it from somebody else. Mm -hmm. I came to get it for myself yeah. and to find out what is going on. Because I want to be a part. We're telling people to be a part of what's going on. You need to know what's happening in the world, the community, and so forth. So I want to be a part of that. So I came to get an understanding of what was happening. Great. Was all your questions answered? Well, I'm just waiting on the senior uh, the director to say what, you know, exactly what all do you do? Oh, I'm yeah. sure it's more than just being up. Everything on that flyer, but... Yeah, well, they can talk like to you about program. it too. It's yeah. detailed, it's okay. broke down under oh, each oh, section oh, of that. Oh, yeah, like so, my name is Tanika. I'm the manager of Senior Services in Calumet City. Okay. Um, we basically, in this part of Brown, she's the manager of Senior Services here in South Holland, as well as in Riverdale. We basically just provide services to seniors. We are, we have a senior luncheon program, we provide a lot of different array of socialization activities for them. Marcia will go over the calendar of events that we have, but since I've been working here, I've been here about two and a half years, we have increased our senior participation roughly about 50%. So um, we proud of our program. We like the work that we do. We co-manage it together. We service probably Almost about a thousand, about a thousand moves a week, correct? About a thousand moves a week to the seniors for our luncheon program. Um, but Marcia can talk more about our activities that we do each week. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Marcia Brown. Um, I've been with Thornton Township um, over 10 years. Um, about a year and a half, I volunteered uh, from my, I would say, career corporate job. Uh, my passion of volunteerism brought me to the township. Um, I volunteered uh, for about a year and a half, and I had such a passion for uh, my seniors. I, I call them my seniors. Um, I love the seniors throughout Thornton Township. So the prior supervisor offered me a position, and I've been in that position, again, with senior services um, over 10 years. Um, as um, uh, Tamika stated, our biggest program, our largest program, is our luncheon program. Um, we serve about approximately on a weekly basis, anywhere between, depending on what, depending on what's being served, anywhere from 750 to 900 lunches per week, 352 weeks per year. We serve lunch every single week, even throughout the holidays, because we have some seniors that that live alone. Um, they don't have anyone, they don't have home help to come in and cook for them. They buy lunch, um, they come by lunch, you know, for the week or to carry them over the weekend. We serve lunch at our Calumet City Senior Center three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We serve lunch at our Riverdale location um, Wednesday and Thursday. Um, each one of those days, just a drive through, you just drive up, you never have to exit your car, you tell us how many lunches you would like, as long as you have your Thornton Township Senior ID. Um, we send you an invoice once a month uh, for those lunches. The meals come in fresh on lunch day through the restaurant, they bring them in fresh, nothing is prepared ahead of time. Um, in addition to our lunch program, we also have a plethora of activities that we um, 
that go on every week, our exercise program, and all of these activities are free to our seniors. Our exercise program at our Calumet City Senior Center location, uh, two days a week at our Riverdale location, one day a week. We have movie of the week. Um, those um, movies are shown after lunch. We have dining lunch once a week at each of the locations if you choose to dine in and not drive through. At our Calumet City location on Thursday, at our Riverdale location on, on Wednesday. Uh, immediately following lunch, we have movie of the week, a selection by our seniors. In addition to the movie of the week, we serve our seniors popcorn and a beverage, all at no cost. We offer senior transportation. We'll take you anywhere throughout Thornton Township, as far east as Lansing, as far west as Markham, as far south as Homewood, Glenwood, as far north as Blue Island, at no cost. You just call our transportation service, reserve your ride 72 hours in advance. We're there to take you to doctor's appointments, dialysis, uh, to go visit a, a neighbor or a friend, you know, within the township. Um, we also have um, a big whist club, pinochle club, activities to bring the seniors out so they can socialize amongst people um, throughout Thorn Township. Um, we also have um, activities, day trips. We take our seniors, we just had a uh, trip to Spirit of Chicago. We take our seniors to movies, um, plays, uh, just a you know plethora of, of um, activities outside the township. Um, we also have um, social events where we bring our seniors together. We have an event coming up where it's a, um, um, a, country, a country music type uh, festival for, um, or activity for our seniors. Um, we have Valentine's Day parties where they come out. We have masquerade balls. We have a New Year's Eve uh, ball every year. Uh, that's one of our biggest events. One, another one of our um, biggest events is everybody's birthday. Uh, our seniors love that. We've been doing it now for over, we're going on, this is the eighth year. Um, they love that because we celebrate, no matter when your birthday is throughout the year, um, the seniors come out and we celebrate everyone's birthday. Um, that's a huge activity. So again, we have a plethora of activities that go on daily to bring our seniors out to get them outside of their homes. Um, I heard you mention bingo. Let me explain bingo. Um, bingo is not a senior activity. Bingo is a community activity. It's for everyone that resides in Thornton Township. That's our bingo that takes place once a month on Thursday. Yeah, once a month on Thursday. That's for anyone that resides in Thornton Township from 18 to 99. Uh, you can participate in that bingo event. Now, we also have bingo where we go to our senior homes. Um, that bingo, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, because it's, it's not a, uh, an activity just, that just takes place in the senior department. That's throughout the senior homes in Thornton Township. Um, that's whether you live at the nursing home or you reside in a senior building. Um, that, that bingo takes place, I want to say once a month. Is it once a month, Kathy? Once a month. Once a month. For, for each and every each and every senior resident or senior senior building. It's three times so, a week. It's three times a week. Um, for the time. Mm -hmm. and you go every we go for all seventeen minutes. All seventeen minutes. Okay, so again, it's not just um, you know, and I know you hear throughout the media that it's you know uh, a, a one one event taking place and. You heard Robert Reed, you know, the bakery bar. No, and, and you know, I just want people to understand sometimes that that one uh, piece of cake yeah. that seniors love, they don't, they don't get it, you know, in the nursing home. Or they don't have family to bring them, um, you know, that one treat, you know, once a month. They love that. That makes someone's day. That makes someone's month. Um, you know, to have someone that cares enough to, you know, come to the senior home, provide an activity to get them out of their, you know, small living environment and to come out and enjoy each other. 
So that's what bingo is all about. It's not just about bingo. It's about bringing everyone together and having you enjoy, um, you know, enjoy the people that you reside, that you would never come out of your home and even meet. They wouldn't even know, you know, you live next door or when you're in the senior home. Uh, some seniors, um, you know, for whatever reasons, they don't come out of their rooms to socialize. But that event, um, bingo, um, it brings everyone together in an environment where everyone can, can enjoy the activity. So that's what bingo is all about. And you hear so much about bingo because our residents love bingo. They, they love it. So um, again, that's what bingo is about. Um, if you have any additional questions as it relates to senior services, you can always um, give us a call. I have an office upstairs that takes care of all things seniors. Um, we also have Medicare counselors where um, if you have seniors that are just enrolling in Medicare because they've turned 65, or you've been enrolled in Medicare but you need clarity on different programs, different plans, we have counselors that are certified by the state once a year. Um, we have that program here in this building. You can also, um, um, we also have our location in Calumet City. That's all things seniors where we have all of our events uh, take place. And then we also have our Riverdale office where we can take care of anything as it relates to um, our seniors and anything, any questions they may need answered or um, any um, things that they need as seniors, such as home health care. If you have questions regarding home health care, we can direct you to the proper agencies. If you want to um, apply for a license plate discount, a ride free pass where you can ride off public transportation, you can visit any one of our three offices and someone can help you um, with those things. And you all just have a great health fair. Didn't y'all just have a break? Um, yes, we just had a, a health fair. I believe it was uh, on Monday. They didn't get um, cake either. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I know. We, they got, what, what was it, oranges and? Apples. 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 Okay, some oranges. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so. We just had a big health fair at our, at our senior center in Calumet City. We do the health fair once a year. We invite out approximately, I think this year we had about 30 vendors uh, that come out and they just do all things seniors. So we have, you know, a number of events. Um, we have a few events coming up. So I encourage you, um, come out, give us a call, ask questions. We will be more than happy to provide you with any, any assistance you need as it relates to, um, you know, seniors or seniors within the community. Thank you. Just, yes. just a brief comment, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Everybody's talking about these prizes at Big Bingo. I've been to Big Bingo, but here's something that hasn't been said. How many times have we had someone win, come up front, and they're a senior or whoever, and they say, well, you know, I really can't use that prize. Let someone else have it. How many, how many times has that happened? I've seen it over and over. So it's not about the prizes all of the time. It's just like what she was saying, the socialization, community, uh, meeting people, you're still here in the land of living, so to speak. You know, that's what I've noticed, and that's why I enjoy coming out. Thank you. And and to me, the prizes is nothing more than another way to get some of your tax money back if you happen yes. to win. Okay. Uh, if there aren't any more questions, we're going to wrap it up. You you want, you got something? I want to get it. Oh, I thought she was letting her do, it, do the thing. You got it? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bingo, uh, for the senior service department, we get calls every week regarding Bingo. Ask us, is Bingo happening? Where are trusting them? Can y'all help us trust them? We literally probably get over 150 calls each month regarding Bingo. So uh, I hope we can continue it, but it's not up to me, it's up to the board. Um, it is a great event. People count on it. Um, it's their own socialization event sometimes for the entire month. So it's very important to a lot of seniors that I come in contact with, will our department come in contact with every month. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Anybody else have anything that you would like to address to anyone up here before we wrap it up? Well, I want to say I appreciate Anyone that took time out their day to come up here 
Uh, as you see, it's not as many people as, as we would like. And it's sad because people will come out to watch people act ignorant and clown, but they will not come out and actually have an opportunity where no one's being attacked and people can talk to you without being cut off and answer your questions or address your concerns. But I really appreciate it. Next time, bring a couple people with you. Let them get the information that gets passed out. And uh, hey, we, we, we enjoy what we do, and we're going to continue to do it. And I just thank everybody for coming out. And you all have a beautiful night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.